Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you all to our worship this morning. I'm Reverend Lucille Fritz of the Heineken Congregational Church, United with Christ in Shelton, Connecticut, where no matter who you are, no matter where you are in life's journey, you are more than welcome here. Today, we welcome on site our Troop 101 and all the uh, young ladies of the troop and also all the leaders, so it's great to see you all today. Also, we welcome online the King Street United Church of Christ in Danbury. Uh, their pastor, Reverend Paul Bryant Smith, is on taking a, a, a vacation Sunday, and he sent them over here. So we'd like to welcome them, and these first announcements are for King Street, so take a nap. <laughs> so for King Street United Church of Christ, Ministry Council will meet tomorrow night at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Council members should check their link, their email for the link. Uh, Bev, the office manager, will be back in the office on Monday. She's been out due to surgery. Um, the King Street United Church of Christ will be serving at the Dorothy Day Hospitality House this coming Saturday, February 26th. Please contact Val for details. And also King Street will be will receiving their offering next week for the Church World Service Blanket Sunday. We do ours in May, so there's a picture of that. Also, next week is King Street Scout Sunday. So, yay. So for our announcements, basically next week we will be having our Women's Fellowship Sunday, which was postponed from last week because of, you know. So, um, also, next Sunday is also our offering for the Silver Lake Retreat Conference, yeah, Silver Lake Camp and Retreat Center up in Sharon, Connecticut. So I know some of you got inserts in your bulletins to read more about it, but I know a lot of you are alumni of the camp, so please be generous. And I think right now that's all the announcements we have. So let's just take a moment to close our eyes and take nice deep breaths as we center our thoughts on God. Breathe in the love of God and breathe out hate. Breathe in the peace of God and breathe out discord. Breathe in the hope of God and breathe out despair. Breathe deeply. Feel the presence of God in you you and around you.
steadfast love endures forever. God will be the Lord Gather us from east and from the west. From the north and from the south. God led our ancestors in the wilderness to a new land. He did thanks to God for God's love. And God's wonderful works to humankind. We worship God with thanks and praise. Once again, we welcome all our scouts here today, and now is the moment for scouting. So take it away, folks. Good morning. My name is Tom Coolidge. Most people call me TJ. I'm one of the adult leaders of the troop, and very briefly, we're going to have the troop come up and say a few words. I want to take a quick opportunity to introduce some of the adult leaders. Um, my wife Sarah and Holly here if you couldn't stand up. Uh, our fourth scoutmaster, Vivian, who's here today, she works nights. Uh, we also have Terry, our committee chair, who's here. And could I ask any of the, the rest, the adults, uh, leaders, committee members, parents, just to stand up briefly? So, 
one of the uh, bedrock foundations is the adult leaders or parent support to make this program possible. So a thank you to them, and they make all the work that the girls do, the scouts do, uh, possible. The second foundation is our charter organization, uh, you, the church, and our Reverend Seal. So we just want to take this opportunity to thank you as well, because without that part, we wouldn't be able to do the program that we do with the scouts and be able to do what they do. So thank you. We'll ask uh, Haley, our city controller, to come up this time, and we'll tell you a little bit about our uh, program.
I was so full of bad foods. I was truly limited as one. Um, there was a lot of food, so I was too much food for my own body. You know, for me, I felt it. Um, we depleted mentally, my body, um, and my mental health. When I say that my way at home was definitely my way of like nature, or we basically walk around and identify feeling and like who we are on the first day. It was like a process, like a learning process in my life. Um, I would like to invite us to the floor. Something that I learned about traveling and how I could evolve with all the activities that were around me. Uh, I traveled to New York like collection and uh, on my own. I really enjoyed helping out Cub Scouts um, at this at the activity that we did, where one of the activities was identifying food in different groups and different types. It helped me learn some things, and I also at a really fun time, I learned a lot about kids. Now, uh, I'd like to invite the Kelsey to the floor. Hello, everyone. My name is Marion. I'm the fourth leader of the Santa Ruth Miracle Second Class. A fun thing that we did this year was our map where we would walk into the park every night and we carried a bunch of candy berries and we threw everyone in the park. Listen for the word of God. This is Jesus speaking. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away from your goods, do not ask them for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is the same? For even sinners do the same. If you lead to those from to, if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be the children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. 
a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put in your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you give back. May God a blessing to the hearing and reading of his holy words. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So yesterday we had a little surprise. A little flurry and then the sun came out. I thought everything was fine and dandy. I was here and then I went home and uh, was doing my wash and doing some other things and I looked out and it was white, pure white. <laughs> And then, I, of course, on Facebook, there was all these, oh, people got the squall uh, announcement and things. I didn't. I feel very left out. I didn't get the squall. Well, but I could see it through my window. So it got me thinking about what I was going to be preaching on today. And we have one word for snow. Snow. The Sami people of the far north of Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Russia have 180. The Inuit people, which is a lot of different dialects and languages, but they have 40 to 50 words for snow. And what I thought was really interesting is the Scots, you know, the Scottish folks up in the, above England there, they have 421. Some are probably English, some might be Gaelic. 421. Different words for snow. And then I was thinking about our passage today about how we are called to love our neighbors. Last week, for those of you who heard the sermon, it was 1 Corinthians 13, which is all about love. And we really just have one word for love. And when you think about it, it covers the whole gamut. We love our spouses and our partners, our significant others. We love our siblings. We love our family. We love our friends. We love football or tennis. We love potato chips and ice cream. We love a favorite television show. We love colors. We love textures. And you think, wait a second, that's all the same word. But it means so many different things. And in a sense, the word love, because of our limited language, gets diminished. Because when you say you love your significant other, and then you say you love potato chips, well, for me it's potato chips anyway, so that's my significant other. But anyway, we have a real problem of kind of getting around what love really is. So, Greek has six words for love. And I picked the Greek because probably, you've probably heard this in the history of churches because this is what pastors preach on. Um, the first one is agape. And that's the big one. That is unconditional love. That's the love that God has for each one of us. And that's the love that God calls us to have for humanity. Then there's eros, which is the passionate, erotic love. Then there's philia, Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Philia is sibling love. Then there's philiotia, which was the love for oneself. Then there's storgen, which is parent and child. And then there is xenia, which is hospitality. Hospitality for guests and hospitality for foreigners. So we look at those six kinds of love and we get a real sense of the different facets and the different words, and they had different ideas. So oftentimes when we see a, um, a passage
passage like we read today about loving our neighbors, we think, well, what, what does that look like? Are we gonna are we gonna live with them? You know, are we going to share all our life's intimate details? Are we gonna be friends forever? No. Because the word that probably fits the scenario is exenia. which is a type of love in the Greek language. When we talk about love, we often think of the feeling. We often think of that warm fuzziness we get when we're with someone we love. But love is not just that, as indicative of these six different types of love. Love goes beyond feeling, but flows into action. It flows into state of being. It is a condition of life. To live in love means that we are aware of one another, that we are aware of ourselves, and that we are aware of God working in our lives. Often the definition of love is that we want the highest vibration. And how Jesus approaches that is very first, he says, love your enemies. Love your enemies. How does that feel? I don't want to love my enemy. They're mean. But Jesus wasn't saying that you become super friends. Jesus wasn't saying that you necessarily have to have a relationship with them. But what Jesus was saying, that our enemies need to be treated as we would want to be treated, with dignity and with respect and with exenia, hospitality. That we would wish for our enemies the highest good. Now that's really hard. That's really hard. But there is nothing easy about living the gospel of Jesus Christ. Especially we're in, the, in, in a world that is so tumultuous and so divided and so divisive. But the words of Jesus comes down to us saying, we need to live in love. All the loves, agape, eros, philia, philatia, storga, and xenia. We live in the spirit of love for all people and all of creation. And that is the way that we make this world a better place. That is a way when all people feel a sense of respect, when all feel, people feel a sense of meaning, when all people have what they need to not just survive, but to thrive. Jesus calls us to be in our place and in our time to show love, to be love, and to offer that love not just to the people that we like, or not to the rest of the people who look like us, who sound like us, or who live like us, but to all people, to offer them that love, that zenia, that is hospitality, offer them that love that is respect. To offer them that love is a concern for their well-being. Because in reality, we are one. We are one humanity. And if one of us hurts, we all hurt. And it's only when we can come together despite all our divisions and despite all our, our, uh, our dividedness that we can really truly be a world of peace and a world of justice, because right now we ain't doing it. God's unconditional love for each one of us plants these seeds in us that we can be welcoming, that we can offer respect to people even if we don't agree with them. And we can love them even perhaps if they don't love us. That's the hard work of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
to love. To love in all its forms, in all its nuances, in all its facets. To be that change in the world where all people are loved and respected, no matter who they are, no matter where they are on life's journey. So let us live those six words of love in our life. And let us truly embody, especially that agape, knowing that God loves us more than we can ever feel, more than we can ever imagine. And that is our hope, and that is our hope. Thanks be to God. Take a moment and take some deep breaths and think about those folks in our lives and those situations in our lives where we'd like to bring to God. We especially think of Beth Howell's family who was murdered. We also think of Michael and Jean and our friend Barbara. O oh, holy God, your love envelops us at every moment of our lives. And your love does not end when we pass away from this earthly existence. Your love is eternal. And you embed in each one of us that love. That love not to just hoard for ourselves, share it. To share it not only with people that we like, but to share it with all. We are so grateful for that love, O oh God, because that's what gives us meaning and purpose. That love you showed us in Jesus Christ, who came to preach and teach and show what real love was. And for your Holy Spirit that moves within us, opening our hearts, opening our minds, and opening our eyes to the world and all its beauty. We do thank you, gracious God, for people in our lives, the people who do love us, and the people who do support us, and also those folks who teach us and challenge us. We thank you, gracious God, for good times in our life, for birthdays and anniversaries. We thank you so much for the scouts, for the ones who are here today, and for scouts all over the world, for all the qualities that they embody. And we thank you for King's, King Street United Church of Christ, keeping the faith in Dan Barron. For the pastor, Reverend Paul Branson. We thank you, gracious God, for the many ways that you offer us opportunities to serve. For the gifts you have given us to share with this world. For the ways that we can grow and live and learn. We thank you. And we praise you for all that you are. And we thank you, gracious God, that you hear our prayers, whether it be the prayers that we speak with our voice or whether they be the prayers that are so deeply embedded in our hearts that perhaps we don't even know we're there. And we thank you that you answer our prayers, even if it's not the way we want them to. Yes, no, maybe, when. Or, I got something better in mind. So we come to you, gracious God, with our petitions. 
for the people and the circumstances in our lives that are in need of healing. We pray for Beth's family and for all families who have lost loved ones. We pray for Barbara as she transitions from this place to your realm. We pray for Michael and for Eugene. And for all folks who are in need of your healing, whether it be in body, in mind, or in spirit. We pray, gracious God, for the homeless and the hungry. We pray for those who are victims of violence. We pray for those who are oppressed. We pray for those who face racism, sexism, homophobia, ageism, and all the things that we slap labels on people to separate. And we pray, gracious God, especially now for what's going on in the Ukraine. We pray for your peace. Oh, holy God, we know that the key to life is love in all its facets. And we know that that love leads to a desire for justice, and that justice leads to peace. So help us to love. Help us to love in all its ways. Open us up to your agape. That we can be your unconditional love where we are. Making this world a little bit better. We all pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're very grateful. We're grateful for all the time, talents, and treasures that folks give and share that we may continue our ministry here at Harrington Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. And we are grateful to God for all the gifts that God gives us that we may make a difference. Let us pray. God, we thank you for all you have given us, and we thank you that we can give it back by our own actions of love and generosity. Pray this in Jesus' name.
love and let us be love in all its facets. And may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated.